So as I told you, we don't, we don't have a general legislative basis for recovery, uh, but uh, this Florin case, which I mentioned a couple of times, uh, where, um, just to re recap, uh, the Council of State uh, would not recognise that interest um, could be fully recovered, uh, prompted the Commission uh, to take action against the Netherlands, um, to require the Netherlands to recover the aid. Um, and of course, if the Netherlands had failed to do that, they would have been exposed then to a second uh, infringement uh, action and a fine and a penalty payment, which um, was launched uh, by the Commission in case um, 40107. Uh, so uh, the Commission started the proceedings against the Netherlands and a deal was done, um, an uh, agreement was reached that the Dutch government would introduce legislation to remedy uh, the defect. Um, now, we were talking about the role of the civil courts just before the break, and what's also interesting uh, as a background here is um, that when the Commission started demanding of the, of the Dutch government that they recover this interest, um, the Dutch government said, well, we, we can't do it through the administrative route, uh, that's not allowed. The Council of State has said no, so we have to go the civil route. So uh, we can still try through civil proceedings based on unjustified enrichment uh, uh, to get this uh, remaining interest. But it will take years, they said, um, and we can't guarantee success. Uh, so we will introduce then this uh, new legislation. Um, so that's just to remind you that that sort of civil, the civil route is open also to the government, not just uh, to those who are countering uh, a measure uh, as being an illegal state aid. Um, so I think you rightly said it's like a kind of a, a basket that catches everything uh, at the end. Um, so this new this new legislation was launched in 2008, then to appease the Commission. Um, and it was quite ambitious, you could say, um, because it would amend, or it would have amended uh, the General Administrative Act, but it would have also amended uh, the Tax Act, the General Tax Act uh, in the Netherlands, to allow them uh, for recovery uh, via uh, the Taxation Act. Um, in particular, it would have amended the period uh, on statutory limitation, uh, prescription periods, uh, which in Dutch law, just as in Italian law, are different uh, from uh, the 10 year term in state aid law under um, the procedural regulation and, and judge made law. So the Commission can go back 10 years in time to require recovery. Um, and the limitation periods in Dutch law vary depending on whether you're dealing with tax law, civil law or admin law um, and that they range from three to five years generally and then there are tax, it's generally five years but there are exceptions uh, where it could be as long as 12 years. Now obviously limitation periods apply at different times, you have um, in some cases you have to start and complete the action within the limitation period. Sometimes they apply, um, having taken the decision you have then a number of years to enforce it. So I haven't gone into that here in any detail, this whole issue of limitation periods, something uh, we can talk about because uh, it's a big issue in Italy as well. Uh, but the idea of the legislation as proposed back in 2008 would have been then to just harmonise for recovery, at least, um, the limitation period would be standardised for 10 years. Um, and I presume that the, the idea was 10 years then uh, from the date of the decision uh, of the Commission, uh, because there can always be an argument as to when that period starts to run, of course. Um, so. There was, uh, when that um, 
legislation was first launched, uh, quite a lot of discussion about how appropriate it was, did it go too far or did it not go far enough? Um, because one of the things that it was uh, linked to uh, was a decision of the Commission. So there had to be a decision of the Commission and that would then spark the procedure under this proposed legislation. Now, there was a lot of discussion as to what was a decision of the Commission because uh, the legislation proposed that there would be a link between the recovery procedure and a final decision of the Commission. Now, what is a final decision of the Commission? Is it one that the Commission itself adopts at the end of the formal procedure requiring recovery? Or is it one that has been subject then to appeal, or I should say annulment, and then appeal if necessary, and has withstood then uh, any annulment action, or has been amended as a result of an annulment uh, action before the court. So what is final? That wasn't clear. Now, from a community point of view, a European uh, point of view, that seemed to be not a very important discussion because the recovery obligation enters into force when the decision is, is adopted. And uh, the annulment action at European level is not, that has no suspensory effect unless, of course, uh, there are very special circumstances where uh, you can ask for uh, an injunction. Uh, so from a European law point of view, final, final is, is not really much of a discussion, but it was a discussion at national level. Uh, we would start this machinery uh, and not give uh, the, the aid beneficiary the opportunity to fully challenge um, the, the Commission decision. Now, I think that um, that situation could have been resolved because if a, if a, a national judge uh, was concerned about the legality of the Commission decision, uh, they can always refer questions, of course, to the, to the, to the European Court of Justice. They could, uh, under certain circumstances, we can maybe talk about that, suspend the national proceedings. Um, so I'm not, I think that, that part of the discussion was a bit of a storm in a teacup, as we say in English, but maybe you have other ideas. Um, there was also some discussion as to whether it was a good idea to amend the General Tax Act and include recovery there um, because um, the idea had been, at least in 2008, in that piece of legislation, um, that uh, you would introduce then a new fiscal measure as the basis for recovery. And there was some discussion amongst tax lawyers, at least, as to whether or not that, that was um, suitable um, to, equate, to equate the recovery with a new tax. That was the approach. Anyway, um, for whatever reason, the bill uh, never uh, progressed through Parliament, it was dropped. And uh, in fact, in June 2016, a new bill was launched, um, <clears throat> which in some way is similar to, to the 2008 proposal. Uh, but differs in important respects. Um, and um, It's still a draft. Uh, it's subject, uh, it has been subject to commentary by the, by the Council of State. Uh, our Council of State is, is divided in two and one division uh, can comment uh, on legislative proposals and one of the Lines of commentary is often uh, the European angle in any event, and the commentary here, of course, is very much uh, that has been published by the um, Council of State. It's very much based on, on state aid from a European perspective. Um, I don't. You have the same. Does your Council of State also give commentary uh, yeah. advice? So indeed, in 2016, the bill was launched. Then it goes to our Council of State. The Council of State was quite critical of it. Um, uh, but although uh, it's not binding, uh, what the Council of State said, they do take, um, they, the government takes it into account and they have to reply to those criticisms and, 
and explain whether or not they think they are of value and whether they're going to modify the legislation or not. Um, and that is all, all publicly available information. So, indeed, we have um, a new version before Parliament at the moment. Um, as we don't uh, have a government, things are a bit slow at the moment. Um, when I left yesterday, there was still no government. There's still no government. <laughs> We're waiting for that. We're trying to beat the Belgian record. I think we're nearly there. I don't know. So things are all a bit slow. I don't think so. <laughs> so indeed, um, the idea is now to have a uniform procedure um, for all cases. Um, and it doesn't matter what, what the origin of the illegal state is, whether it's private or public, or whether it's uh, as a result of uh, ta tax measures, it can all qualify for uh, recovery, albeit that there as we'll come to different procedures. Um, but what is important um, and what has been a point of discussion is uh, that it only these procedures are only applicable when the European Commission orders recovery. So not when a national court orders recovery. And the, the Council of State was critical on that point. They said, well, why treat them differently? Uh, they're equally important um, and uh, therefore if, if a national court has ruled on recovery there should then this, this procedure should apply and the government replied um, to that by saying let's wait and see uh, they said well recovery is very complex uh, the question of whether there should be recovery ordered is complex, how to calculate. Uh, in a commission decision, it might be clearer. That's what they think. Uh, that's not necessarily the case, as I explained at the beginning, and we'll hear more about. Um, but what they said was, look, um, what the government's point of view is, um, that if a national court is ordering recovery of aid, it is using EU principles. So on the basis of the direct applicability of the state aid rules, the principle of loyal cooperation, uh, there should be no issue about recovery anyway. Um, plus, now we have the new legislation, so we have another argument, and that is the principle of equivalence. So according to EU law, uh, national procedure, procedural law is autonomous, but you have to um, give, uh, you have to conform to the principle of effectiveness and equivalence. So, if you have, if you have um, a procedure in national law, you have to make it available also for EU law remedies. So, the the, the government thought that there was no reason uh, to have an explicit inclusion for national court rulings. Now, maybe that's something we can come back to in the discussion. Compare that with the Italian situation, whether that is a good way or not uh, for going forward. Um, so, who has to determine uh, the, the recovery? Um, the reason I put that there was going back to this study, um, I'll just skip back there, um, of the, of the, the commission, uh, commission did a study in 2006 uh, as to uh, enforcement of the state aid rules at, at national level, um, which, which our law firm uh, was partly involved in too. And um, the, one of the things that uh, transpired from the study was that it was not always clear which body had to reclaim the aid. Um, it was also not also clear who had to pay the aid, uh, apart from the procedural question. So um, the, the, the legislation proposes then that the body that granted the aid will be the one that has to uh, determine how much has to be um, refunded and that this will include then the famous interest so that uh, issue will be finally resolved um, so as we'll hear I mean I think when we look at the media set case it's not always so easy to calculate who has to pay it. okay so then we get to the tax so in the original proposal um, from 2016, 
um, tax was not going to be covered. Um, and that, again, was subject to um, a lot of criticism uh, from the Council of State. Um, now, at the time when the proposal was introduced, as far as I could see, what the government was saying was, we're going to deal with tax separately and we'll come with a new proposal on, on recovery of tax in a separate measure. Um, but then, as a result of the criticism of the Council of State, and perhaps for other reasons, um, they decided then to combine then in the, in the final procedure um, then um, a provision uh, that allows then um, state aid in the form of a tax to be recovered through the tax system as tax payable. So, um, the, the separation anyway that we have in the proposed law as it now stands is that, the, that if, if the aid has been paid through tax it will be recovered as tax and that um, the tax authorities then will have to come up with new tax measures like I think in Dutch tax law uh, you can anyway make a new assessment if there is a new fact right? and it's based on that assumption that a state aid recovery decision from the Commission is a new fact and therefore you can make as a tax inspector um, a supplementary assessment um, or a so-called loss settlement decision and that would be the way to effect recovery. Big discussion though about, about how you deal with all these problems as a re if you have to reassess everything how, how far do you go? Um, I mean, if you, if you pay more tax and your income then, your profit is lower, does that mean you could have qualified for all sorts of other allowances? Uh, so how far does the adjustment mm -hmm. and amendment have yeah. to go? Mm -hmm. uh, that, I, th I think, is purely a question of national law. There's no European law guidance there, as, as far as I'm aware. That's a question of national law, but maybe that's also something that's worth talking about. Because the idea behind recovery, of course, is to restore the status quo ex ante, as if the advantage had never been given. But it seems to me that the other side of the coin, then, is if you, if you take away everything that was considered an advantage, you would still have to restore the things you would have been entitled to, but for the advantage. But this, is a, this opens up a huge area of discussion because you can't give, um, I mean one of the big issues with tax rulings at the moment is suppose, um, and many of them are thinking about it, suppose these multinationals sued the governments because the governments, uh, it was the government that issued the ruling, it was the government that didn't notify. It was the government that said, yeah, this is all okay. So, so the government gets a windfall. Um, and so there is, there is some discussion as to whether or not uh, this will go to arbitration um, under bilateral taxation treaties. Uh, and then the question arises, suppose an arbitration tribunal awards damages. Is that then <coughs> stating through the back door? Now, we have a big case going on, maybe you've heard about it, Mikula? Uh, as, far as, I, as far as I know, um, one of the, uh, the companies involved in uh, the ruling uh, affair uh, is mm -hmm. uh, Fiat Chrysler, but uh, the government that should be ordered to cover is the Luxembourg, because uh, the company of the group uh, yeah. that uh, in, in, in the light of the season uh, uh, benefit from the aid of the in the world. Yeah. But uh, as you said, uh, there is, uh, in, in case this uh, season is correct, and so the uh, Latimer has to recover this, this would entail that uh, in Italy the the, the other company, say the, the, the group, the other company, pay more taxes. Yeah. And so, because this is sort of a cross-pricing agreement, the 
things you have. And so, as far as I know, Fiat Chrysler Italian launched an action for refund to get a refund in case, yeah, in case, yeah, yeah. in mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. the ECJ will state, yeah, the decision is correct, mm -hmm. you, have, you have to pay more taxes in Luxembourg. The Italian, the entire group, and so the Italian company has already launched an action to the Italian authority. Please refund me, refund me, the, yeah, refund me the overpay, over tax that the okay. taxes I have already yes. paid, and I pay to the last yeah. Because yeah. the ruling that will be the trust pricing, and so what is paid less, paid more, is paid less. Yeah. The legal in, in each uh, situation. In each yeah. Yeah. The, same, the same income. Yeah, and I think here I just want to say that that situation is not clarified in the new yeah, proposal, yeah. and I think nobody would expect it to be clarified yet. I mean, it's it's uh, such a new situation. I don't think you would deal with it in legislation. Uh, but I mean, we will have, I suppose, from a tax point of view, we will have measures coming from the EU that will help clarify this in the future. Not so much for recovery, but on on. Uh, on group taxation generally, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. So, so for the future it might become clearer, yeah. but for the past... Yeah, okay. you're right, it is a clear situation for the future, but in this case uh, it, it could be easier to get the fund, because we have uh, a decision of the uh, European Commission that yeah. ordered Luxembourg to recover. Yeah. So we have a formal decision, not yeah. uh, from the European Commission, yeah. That order flags in the report. Yeah. So I have to, like the Italian government, the Italian revenue, yeah. in theory, I have to refund the, the group, the entire group. Yeah. Yeah. The company. Yeah. yeah. The advantage is that this situation is within the EU. If yeah. You have a, 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 a foreign company or yeah. subsidiary outside the EU. Yeah. Or yeah. The, no, the problem is. No, I mean, I think with the, the big tax ruling cases, all these problems now come up. How do you indeed deal with uh, the knock-on effect? Um, I think that that's one important uh, issue. Uh, the other is, in, to what extent in, in Italy should then... I mean, one of the arguments could be that Italy should go to Luxembourg and recover, recover the money from Luxembourg and then pay it to Fiat. But we don't have any we don't have any precedents where a member state has gone and pursued another member state. That's not happened. The only famous case where one government has gone to another government to seek recovery is the Ryanair case, where the Belgian, uh, the Wallonian uh, government, went started proceedings in Ireland uh, to recover aid. Um, that Ryanair had received, but those they were dropped, those proceedings. So we still don't know to what extent uh, one court would honour a claim by another member state against its authorities. That's all new, it's all new, new areas. Uh, so these are, you know, there's nothing in the legislation and uh, the, the Dutch government uh, isn't going to take a position on that yet because it's not clear in its view. That um, the EU law compels in the current uh, time, uh, in its current state, that it has to make any kind of adjustments. So I think everybody's waiting for these things to be fought out through the courts. Uh, but I mean, uh, we've seen after Apple, um, the Apple ruling, or even before the final ruling, uh, that the um, Irish tax authorities started sending out to lots of companies. A request for information about where they were paying taxes and how much they paid. Um, so you, you saw uh, that they were already, I think, looking at, at whether they'd missed tax and how they were going to pay it in the future. And, uh, so it will involve, I think, a lot of, I think there will be a lot of litigation coming from these tax ruling cases. But on the arbitration point, um, what, yeah, so in, to the sen in the sense that uh, by granting the tax ruling, uh, you infringe uh, some investor protection uh, provision. I mean, that will also be an important area.
Because suppose then, just suppose that Starbucks was to sue the Dutch government uh, and get some of the money back. Uh, is that then state aid? And that, of course, you know, if you get down, if you're awarded damages, uh, is that going to be considered state aid? Um, and we have a case before the general court called Mikula, uh, which involves um, an arbitration settlement, it's not a tax case. It was a case about regional subsidies in Romania, and those subsidies were withdrawn uh, by the Romanian government shortly after Romania became a member state. Uh, the arbitration tribunal ruled that that had all been done wrongly and that the Romanian state owed Mikula, Mikula, two, two Swedish brothers, um, that Mikula then was entitled to compensation. Now the commission went totally ballistic and uh, brought an action against um, the Romanian court uh, that enforced the arbitration award. So what's interesting there is that you see that national judicial authorities can grant state aid. And that's really, so for you as judges, if you grant uh, damages, you're a source of state aid, which is something to remember. Um, there's also been a recent uh, Greek case where um, uh, a Greek tribunal, a Greek court um, threw out a tariff adjustment in the in the electricity sector, which the Commission had required a tariff adjustment, and the Greek court said that this adjustment is is not in conformity with Greek law, so it's not been done properly. Therefore, it's illegal. So the tariff reverts back to the high tariff, which the Commission said was a state aid, and the European court said that the Greek court should have notified them for state aid clearance. Completely ridiculous, but that is taking the idea that a court is <coughs> capable of granting state aid. Um, so, in the Nicola case, and the Commission, commission issues an injunction uh, to stop the National Court in Romania enforcing the award. Uh, and what we're now seeing is uh, the Commission running around the world also stopping that award being enforced anywhere, uh, as, as you mentioned. Yeah, it's one thing when things are between member states, but when you have other jurisdictions, <coughs> so Mikula tried to freeze Romania's assets in the states, uh, and the Commission intervened um, in those cases in the states to try and stop that happening. Uh, that was thrown out by the uh, US courts, that the Commission had no standing. Uh, but you see the international dimension uh, really increasing now uh, of state aid enforcement. Um, in Belgium, um, Mikula tried to seize the assets uh, of the Romanian government in Belgium, but the Belgian Court of Appeal has rejected that uh, on the grounds that this would be state aid, in fact, and pending. So they've, 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 um, they've um, suspended the procedures before the Court of Appeal, pending the outcome of the, of the court ruling and a similar case has been brought in the UK High Court, and the UK High Court has also said, we're not going to freeze the assets until we know uh, what uh, the court uh, will do in Luxembourg. And this is all on the basis of the duty of loyalty uh, between national courts and the European Court. So you can see um, that that's really important. Another case I find really interesting uh, is uh, an Italian case called CIMET. Yeah, which is also about compensation and damages being state aid. Ah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's how that yeah, yeah. has now been settled. Uh, but that was also a case over, where... Overcompensation. Yeah, overcompensation. Yeah, yeah. So where the, your council of state said, um, in fact, this CMET bus company should have had compensation for running regional bus services. Uh, and there, before the government paid the compensation, they asked the Commission for clearance. Of course, the Commission said it was overcompensation, uh, and that was state aid. And that goes back to the European courts, and the European courts said that paying that compensation is a, is a form of state aid. Um, so for the tax ruling cases, that's also quite an important uh, ruling uh, from the European courts, that you can't pay the state aid. You know, they see that kind of compensation as, um, in damages as um, 
stays in through the back door. So if the administration is being careless, it's not very easy to get redress uh, if there has been recovery. It's the beneficiary that has to, to pay up. And, um, the role of legitimate expectations, as we've touched on, and we maybe look back at that later on.